Hey guys, welcome back to Professional Weekly's YouTube channel. Today we're here at home and we recently returned from our Alaskan cruise vacation. And today we're coming at you with 10 money saving tips and tricks to help you save on your Alaskan cruise. So make sure you stick around, check it out, hit that subscribe button, and let's go. Let's go. Hi right, guys, like Lois said, we uh, got back from Alaska a few months ago uh, and I am reliving my Alaska dreams in my brain almost on the daily because it was so fantastic. We saw plenty of animals, we saw uh, a lot of glacier and ice and cold and um, yeah, there's something to be said for being uh, out in the middle of nowhere freezing your you know what's off while you're sitting in a hot tub. So that was kind of cool too. Um, so yeah, had a really great time and um, hopefully with this video you guys will learn some tips and tricks about how to cruise Alaska a little bit more affordably because it was not cheap. Even though we went in October, even though we went during the shoulder season, even though, even though, even though. So yeah. yeah, so Alaska is a bucket list item for most cruisers Yeah. and it can definitely be very expensive. You're going to pay those bucket list prices, but luckily you guys subscribe to Professional Weekenders YouTube channel because <laughs> we have those tips and tricks that are gonna help you save some money. Number one on our list is you can definitely save a ton of money if you choose to cruise during the shoulder season. So that's either earlier in the season or later in the season. The season typically runs from May to October and if you book in those early months or in those later months, uh, you're definitely gonna get a discount on your cruise fare that's definitely much cheaper. Your cruise in particular is gonna be less crowded. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna cost less money and we found that going at the very tail end of the season, we were able to save a ton of money on souvenirs and things because there was a lot of sales going on. Yeah. A lot of the excursions were less expensive, but there are some trade-offs with that in that a lot of the excursions were not available at the time that we went. Yeah. So I really wanted to go dog sledding, but unfortunately because of the time of the year, there wasn't enough ice to actually do that. So kind of a bummer, but that just means next time he has to take me dog sledding. Yeah. Oh. Number two on our list is you can definitely save some money by booking your excursions with a third party, either through TripAdvisor or through Viator. We'll put a link in the description below to some of the excursions that we booked through there, uh, so you can check those out. But you can typically save about half price off of booking with the cruise ship, uh, although there are some caveats to this as well. Yeah, so just make sure that uh, if you are booking with a third party that you pay attention to the times. So, uh, so for us, we, because I'm a little um, OCD about it, we have a whole spreadsheet of you know, when the ship's gonna leave, when it's gonna get to port, what we're going to do, who, where we book it through, and what time we're gonna get back, and things like that. So just be mindful of that. Um, if you book through a third party, there's no guarantee that the ship is gonna wait for you if something happens and, um, you know, you are started somewhere. But if you book through the cruise line, they guarantee that they will not leave you at the cruise port. Number three on the list is save some money on your transport to and from the cruise ship. If you're able to travel with less baggage, definitely recommend some sort of low-cost airfare like Spirit or Frontier or Allegiant. Uh, if you need um, more baggage, Southwest is a great option because they have the two free bags. If you have elite status with one of the Delta or uh, United or American, you can oftentimes get free bags there or maybe potentially using your credit card. Uh, but definitely look around. One of our favorite tips for booking cheap airfares is to use Google Flights. Mm -hmm. It's not sponsored. We're not affiliated with them at all, but it's a great way to kind of find airfare maybe out of uh you know we live in tampa so maybe we could fly out of orlando for less mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing so you can yeah. look at multiple different destinations to and from uh, each direction try to save some money there mm -hmm. another thing whenever you guys fly to seattle to take your alaskan cruise if you're following the same itinerary that we did is make sure you're not taking an uber to and from the airport if you're staying in downtown seattle definitely look at the uh what is, what is it called the links the, the link. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The link light rail. So we were able to get from the airport to downtown for like five bucks. Yeah, totally. It was like two fifty a person. Yeah. Super cheap. Yeah. So if you, if you're in Seattle, definitely highly recommend the link light rail from the airport yeah. to downtown. It's super easy. And then from your hotel, if you're staying in a hotel in downtown, you can easily walk to the cruise point or mm -hmm. take a, a cheap Uber. Yeah. I think um, ours was like eight bucks when we, when we, when we uh, took an Uber. Yeah. So a lot better than Ubering from the airport. I'm just gonna save you a ton of money. Yeah, for sure. Next on our list is make sure that you bring your necessities. Mm -hmm. So things in Alaska are definitely gonna cost a lot more. Things just on the West Coast, even if you're not uh, from one of those specific states, I think you're gonna find are more expensive as well. So yeah. think about you know if you have a particular type of shampoo or hair conditioner or any of those kind of products like that, you know, deodorant. Mm -hmm. uh, I personally forgot all my. You uh, did. <laughs> All my bathroom. I forgot that you did. 
I personally forgot all of my bathroom items and I had to stop at CVS and mm. buy them all there. And I can tell you they were a lot more expensive in mm. uh, Washington than they are here in Florida. Mm -hmm. um, but we went to TJ Maxx and found hats and like a really nice puffer coat for you for probably a lot more affordable there than we yeah. would have found it here. Is if it, we could even find it here. I think it was Ross actually we went to. Whatever. TJ Maxx, TJ Ross, Ross, it's all, it's all, it's all this, the, it's all the same. The idea is if you have a space in your checked luggage, definitely recommend that you bring uh, your necessities. It's going to be much cheaper than buying them in Washington or particularly in Alaska. Things are going to yeah. be a lot more expensive. The next way you can possibly save some money on your Alaskan cruise is maybe skip that shore excursion. Controversial topic, I know, but just hear us out. This actually came up twice during our, our cruise. Mm -hmm. uh, once was in Ketchikan, where the Norwegian Bliss actually docks outside the city. It, it docks in Ward's Cove, which is about 10 miles away from Ketchikan. And in this case, we decided to book a sea kayaking excursion, which was really neat. Yeah. Um, I thought it was gonna be a lot of fun, and it was fun. Although we didn't really get to see the amount of wildlife that mm -hmm. we wish that we would have seen. Yeah. Um, well, we saw seals. We saw doll porpoises. We saw a ton of starfish. So. Yeah, you know, we, we had dreams of kayaking with whales. And then. Did not quite work out that way. <laughs> uh, but because we did this excursion and the, because of where the ship docked, we didn't have time to go explore downtown yeah. Ketchikan. And downtown Ketchikan is one of the most picturesque towns in all of Alaska. Mm -hmm. Definitely recommend going and checking that out, although we didn't get to do it. Yeah. So you could you could save some money. It was $150 a person to go on the sea kayaking trip. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, we do kayaking in here in Florida all the time. Yeah. We could have saved some money by just going to downtown and just walking around. Mm -hmm. And most of these towns are really picturesque, really cute, mm -hmm. uh, and definitely lend themselves to easily walking and, and yeah. just take, taking in the sights. So mm -hmm. we could have saved some money there. Our longest day was in uh, Skagway. So the thing to do in Skagway, right, at least when whenever we were there, is to take the train up to Whitehorse Pass. So they run, I think, three separate trains. Ours happened to be like in the middle of the day. So in the morning we got off, we walked through the town, and then we called the one cab <laughs> that was in Skagway and paid like five bucks to take us to the, um, what was it? The, it was the waterfall, Re Lower Reeds Falls. Mm -hmm. And I uh, walked around there for a few minutes. Now it was kind of cool because we were the only ones there, right? Cause we went first thing in the morning. Yeah. And so this is another one that kind of yeah. things that didn't go quite as planned because we had mm -hmm. initially booked a trip that was going to take us up uh, to the Yukon, right? Yeah. We're yeah. going to do a bus trip. Uh, that sounded like a lot of fun. Unfortunately they canceled on us mm -hmm. last moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, we did get a refund on that. So we got yeah. to save some money. But it kind of left us without something to do. Mm -hmm. And so that yeah, that day we decided, well, what else can we do in, in Skagway? Not a ton. Uh, but we did walk around downtown and we did go up to Lower Reed Falls. It was really neat. Mm -hmm. And we got to save some money by not booking that extra excursion. Yeah. I still dream about the pretzel I had in, uh, in, in Skagway. That pretzel was so good. <laughs> Next up, a major way that you can save some money on your Alaskan cruise is to book an inside cabin. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know that we talked about this in our other video about being one of the necessities, one of the things yeah. that you have to do. Uh, but I would say if, if you've already been to Alaska or if you plan on going back to Alaska, mm -hmm. uh, if this isn't typically a bucket list item for you, there are still plenty of places around the boat where you can get amazing, spectacular views yeah. of all of the, the different glaciers and all the wildlife. So you don't necessarily need a, a balcony cabin to get those views. Mm -hmm. And at nighttime, it's gonna be dark anyways. So you might as well be inside. You're not gonna see anything at your balcony at, at nighttime anyways. You can save about half price by booking an interior cabin. Uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm hit or miss with this one. I guess because we've cruised the Caribbean enough to where I'm like, yeah, I probably can do an inside cabin for a couple days. But for me, it's, you know, you're typically in Alaska on the cruise ship for anywhere from five to 10 days, right, give or take, right? So I just think it's a tiny space for two people, you know, who love each other, but have sometimes differences of opinions. So. Still recommending the the balcony cabin, but if you're trying to save a dollar, then interior cabin is definitely the uh, way to go. Another money saving tip is make sure that you buy your souvenirs in port mm -hmm. and not on the ship. Souvenirs on the yeah. ship always cost more than they do in port. So if you're looking for those T-shirts, if you're looking mm -hmm. for hats, uh, definitely pick them up on shore. If you've already taken advantage of our other money saving tips and you're booking in the shoulder season, we saved a ton of money by by buying souvenirs at the end of the season because. All the souvenir shops were clearing out the old inventory yeah. and everything was on sale and we got way more sure. souvenirs than I expected that we were gonna get. Next up on our tips to save money is skip that drink package. 
Yeah. I know everyone's going on vacation and everyone wants to have a good time and I'm all, I'm all for that. Go ahead and you do you. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're the type of person that doesn't need to drink every day and you don't, you know, you don't want to drink all day, every day, mm -hmm. you can definitely save some money by not buying a drink package, not even a soda package. Yeah. If you really want to go cheap, that's how we go most of the time. Mm -hmm. The, all the cruise ships do offer free water and free juice and lemonade. Yeah. Uh, so there are uh, several non-carbonated, non-caffeinated, non-alcoholic beverages that are available free of charge. Mm -hmm. and you can set, definitely save quite a bit of money because some of those drink packages run over a hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Uh, and if you do just want to indulge in one or two adult beverages here and there, you may be actually better off by purchasing those a la carte mm -hmm. uh, only when you want them. And even when cruise ships advertise, oh, free drinks package, it's not technically free and here's where they get you, right? You still have to pay 20% gratuity and taxes on that, right? So even though they're saying, oh, it's free. So if you're it, the next time you go to book a cruise that says, hey, free, free drinks package, put it in your cart with a drinks package and then open up a new browser and then do it without the drinks package and you will see a price difference and it has to do with the, the, with the gratuity that they typically tack onto that. So even though it's like, hey, free at sea, and with that is soda, because we looked at that. We were like, well, okay, it's free at sea, we'll get, we'll get the soda package. Mm -hmm. And we're like, why is it so much more? And then we look through where the breakdown was and it had to do with that extra gratuities. So. Exactly, yeah. Oh, and another part of this too that we definitely helped save us some money is we don't like to drink coffee, right. but we do like our caffeine. Yes. So Christine found these little Alani New mm -hmm. packets. Yep. Uh, so again, we're not sponsored by Alani New, but yeah, that was really nice. They're yeah. these little powder packets. So mm -hmm. a lot of the cruise ships, again, they have rules about you can't bring on any liquids, but mm -hmm. if it's powder, they let you on with it. Can't bring on any beverages, but yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had these little powder packets of you know flavor and caffeine mm -hmm. and we were able to dump into our waters and have our energy drinks and in the morning. that, yeah, it was so good. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very nice break from the mm -hmm. typical water juice, yeah. you know, lemonade, mm -hmm. uh, and to give us a, an additional option of something that we could drink and something yeah. that was caffeinated to yeah. get the day going. Right. Our next tip for saving some money on your Alaska cruise is make sure they eat on the ship. So yeah. if, if you don't know and if you've never cruised before, most of the food that you're going to consume aboard on board is included already in, your, in the cost of, of cruising. So they have the buffet, they have the main dining room uh, where you can you know, eat your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, definitely make sure that you go and eat a big breakfast before you head out on your excursions, try mm -hmm. to fill up. And then a lot of times we'll often just skip lunch. Yeah. Uh, and that way we can um, just basically eat two meals a day. We'll have breakfast, go out on our excursions, skip lunch, come back, have dinner with our, you know, watch our show and be done for the day. Uh, but you can definitely save some money by not buying food in port. I understand it can be a little bit controversial because a lot of these port towns, the restaurants and stuff, they do survive off mm -hmm. of the tourists. Mm -hmm. If you want to support the local economy, we're all for that. Absolutely. But if, if you're really looking to save as much money as possible, mm -hmm. definitely recommend taking advantage of what you already have available, what you've already paid for in your mm -hmm. cruise package and eat that food that's available complimentary on board. And our final tip for saving some money on your Alaskan cruise is if your goal is just to get to Alaska and just to see the majority of the sites mm -hmm. and you're willing to skip a little bit on some of the, on the top tier you know items i'd say you can book an inside passage cruise so this is yeah. the one that's going to typically leave from Seattle or from Vancouver and do a round trip uh, up to Skagway, Juneau, Ketchikan, yeah, Glacier, Glacier Bay, Bay and return uh, this is going to save you a little bit of money in a couple different ways one it's going to be a shorter cruise it uh, doesn't include a land aspect, like if you were to go to a Anchorage and then take a train up to Fairbanks. Mm -hmm. So you're going to save that cost. Also, because you leave and come back to the same port, mm -hmm. uh, you can book that round trip airfare, which round trip airfare is going to be a lot more affordable than booking open leg uh, you know, to Seattle and then out of Fairbanks. So you can definitely save some money there too. Comment down below if you have ever done that open leg where you've gone to, uh, you, you've done like the lane excursion first and then you've got on the boat. Cause I would love to hear some stories about people who, who've done that. Cause I hear Denali National Park and Fairbanks and uh, the inside interior part of Alaska is really beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I would definitely love to go visit one of the- yeah. We will go back to Alaska for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would love to go visit Anchorage, Fairbanks you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and see all that. But overall, I'm really happy with the value that we got by going up and yeah. seeing, you know, like so the, the major cities that you're gonna, most people are going to see, mm -hmm. Juneau, Skagway, Ketchikan, uh, but seeing Glacier Bay is a must-see mm -hmm. attraction. So yeah. really glad that we did that. Same. Speaking of must-see attractions, if you want to know our other ten, top 10 list of things that 
we wish we would have known before going to Alaska. Make sure you check out the video just before this. We'll link that in the description below. And we'll tie our entire playlist in the of Alaska in the link down below as well. So let us know if we if we missed any tips. Like how have you saved money whenever you've gone to Alaska? I'd love to hear about it. Okay. And with that being said, we're out of here and we'll see you next weekend. Bye. You just trying to get amateur outtakes? No, I, just, I feel like you're upset with me because I did that. And I'm sorry. I'm not upset. I'm just cold. <laughs> Let's go. He means gotta stay home though. Were you looking at the dog when you said that, or were you looking at the I, camera? I was looking at the dog. <laughs> Some money on your the next. No, ma'am. No grumping. Listen, there's no grumping today. No grumps. Yeah. So number one on our list. What is what? Oh, if I was at you. <laughs> do you want to say it or do you? Um, that's funny you say it. No, 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 no. I'm just going to drink my drink. You go ahead. Good. We can't do it while you're drinking. Continuity issues. Oh. Put your drink down. And your kitty issues. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, get out of here, cat. All right. Her feelings are hurt. <laughs> ton of money. <laughs> Come on, kitty. Come on. Come on. Well, she's going to get out of here. <laughs> because we're going to have cat tail. Throughout the entire video. All the way. I told you there's no rules in the last week. Sit, please. That's a good girl. Okay. Cat. Next up on our... Right. Sorry. Uh, whenever you cruise... Speaking of Alani, you know. Yeah. Sorry. I'm right. thirsty.